On the first day, God created the heaven and the earth. On the second, the entire atmosphere. Third day brought us dry land and plants. Fourth day, the sun, the moon and the stars. On the fifth, he brought sea creatures and birds. On the sixth, he brought the land animals and the first human to live. And on the seventh day, he had to rest because Torbjorn took over. Hello everyone and welcome to the video where we take a closer look at this blessed and short thing called the subscribe button. Yes, I am desperate. This sweet talents ranging from engineering like Elon Musk to this game so good, Andrew Tate can only dream about achieving a fraction of what this absolute unit of a man achieves single-handedly quite literally. But it's not only the technology that makes our hero so likable, his kit being so basic yet so iconic makes him one of the easiest heroes in the game. But does it mean his skill ceiling is low too? Well, yes! The hardest part in playing Torbjorn is adjusting your aim 3 meters up to the sky, so all of your funny noodles get a very close look at the dental care of your enemies. Besides that, he's almost perfect. I say almost because unfortunately, our man has one mistake on his record that is not pulling out. With this corny joke out of our way already, let the gears spin and the popcorn crunch, because it's time to begin the Torbjorn Review! Our story begins with Torbjorn being racist. From the start, he was very skeptical of the advanced and more important, sentient and empathic Roombas, because he himself was working on them and had a huge impact in the military technology. Due to those mechanical talents, he was recruited by Overwatch and went on multiple missions and got to meet many great people. On one of those missions, he lost his hand, so he built himself a new one. In another mission, he lost nothing, but decided to build a new weapon just out of boredom. Sometime later, it just so happens that the weapon he built was stolen and used to attack a city by the very bad Roombas. Moved by his guilt, he single-handedly saved an entire city. I told you he's a god. Later, his daughter Bridget dips on an adventure with Reinhardt, and Torbjorn just simply doesn't care. Even more time later, he has been messaged on WhatsApp that there is a wild Roomba somewhere in the woods, loudly announcing he will handle it by himself, he gets the permission to do so, but with some police people by his side for legal reasons. He catches the Bastion in the wild doing a terrific act that is helping the beavers building a tam. Of course, he shoots him and the beavers on the spot. But don't worry, I'm talking about the police officer I just mentioned, not Torbjorn. Classic police just shoot everything that's not white. Torb being himself just snaps his fingers and with that he defeats all the police people and runs away with the Bastion seeing a glimmer of hope in him. He basically adopts him, and thanks to Bastion, he's no longer racist. Repairing, upgrading, and simply taking care of Bastion, he bonded with the Transformer Roomba and lived happily ever after. So, Reinhardt gets Bridget, and Torbjorn gets Bastion. This man is just 20 steps ahead of everyone. The turret man very clearly stands out from the crowd, or not. Being the shortest hero in the roster has a very strong base level, as the originality is already established, so there's nothing more for me to do than to nitpick in some details and his weapons. Just like the previous episode where I reviewed the crazy math teacher, the default skins show a giant difference in quality. The default 1 skin feels more like Overwatch, more like Torbjorn, while the default 2 is just… how do I put it? This just isn't Torbjorn, okay? The hammer being a different enough repair tool to be safe from any copyright strikes from TF2 looks straight up like a plastic toy, but it's not an issue with the original design. Same with the turret, that I will talk about in a second. I still prefer the older one because it has those scratches, it has the iconic shape, and it is the goddamn turret, not a free unity asset. Back to the actual Torbjorn. A very noticeable difference is also the headpiece and how bare the version 2 looks compared to the original. The belly part which is like 70% of Torbjorn, is also way more toned down with simple leather compared to the hot beast of a chest plate. And lastly, the beards. We have the manly fur that is held with mechanical parts, and here we have a guy who at least tried. The new turret also tried to achieve 
something. But as I said, it gives out way too much plastic vibes where it should be steel and mechanical. The only saving grace of the second default skin is its weapon, where it's not better, but it's not worse too. So huge progress. Also while on the topic of the weapon, here we can notice something that I really love, which are small additional touches that the careful animators do just for fun. For example, there is this little clap that opens when you reload, which is obvious, but it also flops up and down when you are jumping in game, giving it this really loose but very practical feel. Additionally, I can't let the left hand of our dwarf slip past me. This mechanical arm has a purpose as the most illegal thing in Minecraft, that is an infinite lava source, and also it looks goddamn sick when you melee with it. Torbjorn has one of the best reload animations in this game, and it's all thanks to this mechanical arm. Also plugging in some sound work, I can't imagine a better fitting sound effect for his walking. Other skins are leaning into some very wild themes like Biker, Viking, or even Santa Claus, but there are some very stupid ones like the Pirate or this? Themed skins are good, because you have a certain rule set that you can stick to, but it also kills any form of originality. The best attempt at an original skin for Torbjorn has to be the cyborg skin with the red hot face. But other than that, Torb's skin set is just boring. That doesn't mean the skins are bad. No, 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 no. They are great, but I just wish there was some spark of originality like in the examples I'm showing on the screen right now. Remember when I said in the intro section that there is only one difficult thing to learn about Torbjorn's gameplay? Well, I lied a little, because in reality, there's like two. The first thing you notice when picking up Torb is that your camera is on the same level as everyone's balls. Which is nuts. It was really hard for me to get used to this drastically different point of view, but after a few games I discovered that in reality you don't need to aim at all. Finding a spot that is very often visited by the enemy gamers and just shooting at the average head level with your noodles is enough to become the menace of the lobby. This of course leads to people wanting to counter you, so say hello to Sigma once again, who will be more than happy to farm your spam and the turrets, and when he's done milking you, he'll just block you off with his shield. But this still isn't as annoying as a DPS player that you just pissed off. From my experience, it's usually the high mobility DPS that are mostly salty about your perfectly fun and balanced turret ability. Be prepared for your turret to have a lifespan of my brain cells, because as soon as you place it, most of those animals will go out of their way to wander straight to this poor little baby and use every piece of utility they have to destroy, or should I say, obliterate your turret. Poor Jerry. Personally, I don't recommend pissing off Echo players, as they might have the strongest kit to fully counter you, and ironically, you have one of the strongest abilities that counters them. So it's a fair ecosystem, where there will only be one king of the jungle. While on the topic of turrets, this is the second hardest thing to learn, which is playing with it. Opposite to jungle, Junkrat's steel trap, you don't want to throw it at randomly left and right, as either it will get noticed and destroyed very quickly, or it will be chilling on the other side of the map, switching its discord status to invisible. What should you do then? Prepare the turrets before the fight starts, either on defense, which is common, but also on offense. Don't place aggressive turrets unless the situation allows for a 3 second opportunity for the turret to set up. A living turret is more useful than a dead turret, so by placing it in the Back, you are sure you have a safe space to lure the enemies into, so you can fight them there. It's hilarious how easy stupid enemies will chase you down and not even notice in how bad of a situation they are getting themselves in. If your aim is bad, just be a distraction for your turret and pop the overload to gain some overheal and also run slightly faster. This ability is also great for offensive pushes and raw dogging anyone at close range. If you didn't know, Torbjorn is capable of two types of fire. The unholy sniper mode or a reaper from ebay. The noodles, while fun for some satisfying shots and funny long range interactions, are not as dopamine rich as the close range full damage shotgun blast to the face. Overall I'd say that Torb's primary weapon is very fun to play, and after getting used to the projectiles and knowing when is the perfect opportunity to strike with a shoddy shot, you become very deadly very quickly. His other weapon, that is a gift from the gods themselves, can repair turrets and humiliate enemies. I will sadly admit that I prefer keeping my sweet aimbot Jerry alive than going full on code of violence on the enemy team. But just for you guys, I did it once. So here's the short holy hammer frag in its full glory. Enjoy.
And of course, the climax of Torbjorn's gameplay, that is the spicy goo cannon. When Torbjorn gets excited enough, he will let out a bunch of hot burning lava blobs that will splooge in a small pond and make every enemy that steps on it die instantly. Trust me, that's how it works. It's hilarious how stupid the play of the game system makes you look, because I find myself just having the best walk of my life, admiring the nature around where all of the sudden I get a triple kill, because two morons decided to take a closer look at my Splatoon game play and of course Jerry the turret is doing his job. Wow, this gameplay segment is getting quite long. CONCLUSION! I adore this hero. He may not be my most played character in this game, but in my heart there is always a place for him right next to my name Jeff meme and a metal pipe falling down sound effect. It's a rare sight to behold to see a character's knee pads being his shoes at the same time, but even if it's weird, I love it. Him also adopting Bastion is just so sweet and charming, I'm melting just thinking about it. On Unfortunately, turrets or aimbot mechanics overall in gaming aren't something I'm very pleased with because it takes away the fighting from the players and forces them to experience the closest thing we have to a functional PvE mode. But come on, it's Torbjorn. I'll allow it just because I'm too afraid of his power. The 4-foot Elon Musk will end up with a score of 2 cherries out of an apple. Traditionally, don't forget to let me know down in the comments what hero would you like me to review next and let's confuse the YouTube algorithm once again and end your comment with your favorite sandwich recipe. I'm eager to find out what unholy creations you guys consume, and I'm going to start by letting you everyone know that there is nothing better than simple bread and Nutella. Go ahead and fight me, but be warned, you will lose. Don't forget to drink water. Thanks for watching, have a lovely day, bye bye.